Daddy's alive. He's alive. He's alive. I believe the stone was rolled back and he came out. Yeah. And he's alive today and sitting to the right hand side of the bar to make his mistake. For you and I. Yeah. If you believe that this morning, give him a round of applause. Praise God. Brother Vernon, are you ready to preach the word? Praise God. 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 Praise you have to quicken Ephesians chapter 2. We were dead in trespasses and sins. That was me. Yes. That was you. Yes. You were lost. And no doubt we all were. But I'm glad that that precious blood was shed that we might have hope of eternal life. Psalm 78 is where we'll be this morning. We're going to go back to a, a message. And I'll just go ahead and tell you, I preached this about three years ago. And God spoke to my heart. He said, I want you to go back again and you just obey me. And I prayed about it. And he said, I'll give them something else. So if you find your place in Psalm 78, you'll stand as we reverence the reading of the Word of God. We're going to read the first eight verses here, good Lord willing. We pray the service will be a great help and a blessing to many. Before we read the Scripture, where's Trina Tiffany at? Trina, wave at me. Trina, where are you at? Trina Tiffany's been with this church for three years now. And I thank God for it. And I want to thank and just praise God. Amen. 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 Appreciate her so much. Psalm 78, the Word of God. Notice with me, the Bible says, Give ear, O my people, to my law. Incline your ears to the words of my mouth. I will open my mouth in a parable. I will utter dark sayings of old, which we have heard and known, and our fathers have told us. We will not hide them from their children, shewing to the generation to come the praises of the Lord and His strength and His wonderful works that He hath done. For He established a testimony in Jacob and appointed a law in Israel, which He commanded our fathers that they should make them known to their children, that their generation, that the generation to come might know them even the children which should be born, who should arise and declare them to their children that they might set their hope in God yes. and not forget yes. the works of God, right. but keep His commandments Amen. and might not be as their fathers a stubborn and rebellious generation. A generation that set not their heart aright and whose spirit was not steadfast with God. God bless the reading of His Holy Word this morning. You may be seated in the fear and presence of the Lord. I want to tell you this morning that this is a time unlike we've ever seen anywhere in human history. This is an extreme day that we're living in and there's an extreme generation of young people that have come up and it is our obligation and duty and responsibility as children of God to declare to them and tell them the truth of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Right, brother, this extreme generation has extreme cars, extreme games, extreme clothes, extreme music, and the last thing they need to hear, uh, hear about is a dead God and have dead people right. declaring that nothing is alive in Jesus Christ right. today. For the, that there was ever anyone who was extreme, it was the Lord Jesus yeah. Christ. How do you know that, preacher? I told you last Sunday night because it's 2,000 years later and we're still talking about Him today. He is today the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. He is, was, and is to come. And always will be. He's the reason why I have great hope. He's the reason why I have an anticipation for the generations that are to come because I really believe that all of this extreme stuff is out, out there today and these extreme children that have come up in this generation is looking for a reality in God and they've tried to find it in all sorts of other different things. That's right. If you've checked out the television lately, you'll turn it on and you'll see all kinds of spiritual stuff on there. And most of it goes directly contrary to this Bible that I have right now. 
I mean, we see the, the, the zombies and all like that going on. And I believe this is a generation that's hungry for something that they've never had before. And they may not know how to get a hold of it. But thank God I can only hope that the previous generation will point the way not to a church, not to a denomination, not to a religion, but to Jesus Christ, who is the way, truth, and the life. He's the hope of all generations. Yes, He is. Somebody said, Pastor, all this stuff that's going on today, that's too extreme for me. I didn't need all that when I was growing up. No, we didn't. Back in our day and time, we had a tree. Yeah. And a stick. And a ball. And a rock. And a box. Yep. Amen. Amen. That's right. Amen. And believe me, it may not make you feel uncomfortable to hear this, but in 2016, methods have changed. Right. And methods will continue to change. But the message of the gospel must remain the same. Amen. That's why we don't hold back here at this church to declare unashamedly the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ to our children. Every generation owes the next generation the truth of the gospel. And let me say it again, we're living in a day and age where we're being lied to on every hand. Amen. Every time you turn on the television or a radio or see a billboard sign, uh, amen, we're being lied to. And this generation that's here and the generations preceding, we've got to be able to tell the next generation the truth regardless of a generational gap, regardless of a communication gap. There are generations that come and go and things change, but the preaching of the cross of Jesus Christ will never change. Amen. Amen. The truth is, the next generation needs to know this and nobody wants to tell them today, it seems like, because we've gotten to a place where we're too politically correct even inside the church. That's right. My brethren, it ought not so to be. The next generation is looking for somebody and they need somebody who is so on fire for God that they're willing to cut through the chase and tell them drugs will kill you. Alcohol will kill you. Yes. Yes. That's what they need today. Amen. You need to tell your kids in the next generation. If you want to live in a good society, you need to be a good citizen. That's right. Yeah. Amen. Amen. If you want to have friends, you need to be a friend. Right. If you want to live in a good neighborhood, you need to be a good neighbor. That's right. Amen. Psalm 78 gives us a parental pattern of what not to tell that perhaps will hurt them, but not only that. It tells us what we should tell them. It makes it clear. I could speak on this because I have four children. I've got some teaching credentials. I've taught in some public schools in this area. And you know I've noticed that many times we specialize in taking things away from our children. But it seems like when we take things away from them, we're not too apt to go back and give them what it is they need at the time that they need it. So I mean, don't just go into your room and clean out their room and get rid of all the music and things that you don't want them to listen to and let it end with that. But get them the music that they do need to be listening to. Yeah. And supply them with what they need when they need it. Well, pastor, that's their mindset. They do what they want to do. Well, if you're here today and you're just doing what you, what you want to do, then you're going to find yourself living in a locked room with the door shut and you'll never come out and see the light of day. That's right. You need to be able to have... The guidance that's needed. When God has not put us as parents of these young folks here to be their friend and their buddy. We're here to be their parent. You're not here to be their buddy. You're here to be their leader. You're here to give them some guidance. You're here to watch over them. Amen. And it's not always going to come across with a heavy hand. Now the fact of the business is, and I've said it before, I'm not against busting a rear end if I have to. Amen. I, I've done it before, and if it's necessary, I don't mind to do it again. But sometimes, all it takes is just to gather them up and say, listen, honey, this is what's right, and this is what's wrong. And you're mine, and you're in this family, and me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord, and we're going to do what's right. Amen. And we're going to do the right thing. Psalm 78 gives us the explanation. And you need to know that this generation has been exposed to hell's agenda for their souls for a long, long time now. Amen. Amen. So they're not afraid for you to tell it like it is. They're not afraid for us to step up and be radical for Jesus Christ. Now listen, Amen. this is where I get excited about this church and this congregation because we're at a place, uh, amen, right now where young Christian people are going to stand out like a sore thumb in 2016. Yeah. Amen. 
because there's so much stuff that's been shifted to the other side. And if you start, uh, if you start taking a stand for Jesus Christ, that's going to put you in a place all your own. But don't worry about it. Because there's still people today, thank God, who are still declaring that Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life. And no man cometh unto the Father but by Him. Amen. You talk to teens, you talk to children, you talk to college kids, whatever it may be. This extreme generation is more than just tell me. They want somebody to show me. Show me. Somebody said, well, Pastor, we don't need all that. We, let me tell you something. This generation is not like we are. I mean, we fed them, we fed them prepackaged stuff long enough. We fed them Mountain Dews and candy bars long enough and they wonder why they're pinning off the ceiling. There you go. Uh, let me make it clear. There's a large percentage of children today who are being declared ADHD and everything else when in fact all they're really looking for is a Christian mama or a Christian daddy to show me and to tell me how it is that I need to conduct my life for the cause of Christ. That's right. Amen. So why do we need all of that? Because this generation doesn't just want to be told to go to church. They want somebody to show me. Right. They need somebody that will lead by example. Show me. We're a visual society today. Show me. That's what all of this social media is about today. And whatever the next thing that comes down the pike, the free gift gospel mission is going to be on that too, trying to reach out to them people because this generation is a generation that's got to have it right up in their face. Some of them weren't raised with a mom and dad around. We've had, we've had children who've come through this church and they didn't come through this church because their mama and daddy came. Some of them didn't even have a mama and a daddy. That's right. And I believe this generation is looking for a radical encounter with God and I believe we've been deprived of Bibles in school and prayer in school and God in school and everything else and they're draw drawing their values from a fractured society and they're drawing their values from broken homes. Where moms and dads and grandparents are not there. And so we're coming from broken homes and broken lives. That's why I believe the souls of many young people today are crying out for something that they have yet to experience and they need to have an experience with God. Amen. And they're not even sure what they're looking for a lot of times. Their future is uncertain and that's why this church on this very corner right here in Kingsport is so important today. We are here to reach out to another generation and bring them to God with all the passion that we have in our home. That's right. All right. All right. Someone said, well, it, has, it don't have to be that loud. You know, you don't have to do all of that. Yes, it does. Yes, it does. Listen, my dear friends. We're not here to compete with the world, and we're not trying to, you see. But we are trying to do everything possible to get people into this church so this generation can say, hey, there's something there about this situation that's causing this individual to turn to Jesus Christ so maybe there's something there for me too. See, God has set guidelines for parents to teach their children. And this is the reason why. So the next generation would know them. Your influence as parents cannot be understated this morning. Paul told Timothy, he said, Timothy, you've had this influence in your life. You've had it with your mother. You had it with your grandmother. And he says, I perceive that it's in you also. You see? What you need to know is regardless of who your mama is, or who your daddy is, or regardless of what's going on, the DNA of the previous generation is on the inside of you. So we need to look at our children today and say, you're in me, and I'm in you. Are you hearing this? You're in me, and because you're in me, me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord, uh, and, and we're going to do what's right. Amen. You see, it's unfortunate today that I have to address this, but we are living in 2016, and you may not want to hear this, but I'm not going to suppress the truth from you this morning. If you don't tell your children about sex, there's a devil that's waiting just around the corner, and he's going to tell them, and he's going to bring all of his influence in when he does. That's right, you see can we talk about this this morning? If you don't talk about all the stuff that's out there on the edge, then ladies and gentlemen, trust me, there's a devil waiting in the shadows. He's going to guide them. He's going to try to lead them. 
There's entire gangs of people out there that would love to take your young people. I'm talking about crips and bloods and everything else that you can think of. That's why today we need to gather them up and say we're going to stay right here. We're in the camp of God. We're in a good place. And you don't have to go looking for anything else because God, your Heavenly Father, loves you. And you're in a good place here. That's what I'm trying to say. All right. Amen. Are you with me this morning? Yes. Your children need you. Yes, they do. I said your children need you. Amen. Amen. Contrary to polls and opinions that are circulating today showing a decline <laughs> in the church, I declare to you right now that your children need this church. Amen. Amen. Your children need this church as a place of a steady communication with yes. God and a steady exposure to the Word of God and to God's people. And that's why I get excited like I do. Because the last thing our young people want to do is to walk into an old dead church where people are sitting there with their hands folded and nobody's making a move toward God. I want you to know today that they're looking for somebody who's on fire for God. Somebody who will stand up and say, I will bless the Lord at all times. Yes. 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 shall continually be in my mouth. I will praise God with all of my heart, all of my soul, mind, body, and strength. Yes. 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 Thank you. How many young people today are literally living because they remember what some preacher said? Or some Sunday school teacher told them, or some praying mama, or some praying daddy told them. How many of you are sitting here today because you remember what some preacher said when you was a kid, or some Sunday school teacher told you, and it wasn't necessarily because you felt some big drawing in your life, but by the grace of God, God held you long enough till you could get your mind right, and you could come out of that pig pen that you were in, and you're here today for that very reason. That's right. All right now. All right. We are debtors to the next generation. Yes. So why are so many people, young people today uncertain about God and doubtful and skeptical and they're uncertain about God's ability? The question is, how can we stop this great epidemic of unbelief? How can we stop this great epidemic of hopelessness in this next generation. Well, this is what I believe from Psalm 78 this morning. This is the need to the next generation. From one generation to the next. They need to know these things. So if you're writing some things down this morning, here it is. Number one, and we'll go through this quickly, they need our faith to be authentic. Yes, they do. They need our faith to be real. They need you and I to be genuine. Amen. So don't be sending mixed signals. We need to get real today. I've heard young people here in this day and time say they reject God because people who go to church will live one way at church and then another way outside of church. And our young people are streetwise. They can tell the fake when you can't. Come on, somebody. We've got to get real. It takes a real, sincere, authentic relationship with Jesus. Amen. Today. Hallelujah. One where your faith has been put on trial. One that stood the test. Paul used the word unfeigned to describe the faith of Timothy's mother and grandmother. That word means sincere. Or genuine. That's what we're talking about. He said there is a genuine and a sincere faith that has been passed down from generation to generation. That's what young people today are looking for. Okay. Secondly, from one generation to the next, they're looking for faith that's unshakable. Yeah. Be faithful. Be faithful to God. Have an unshakable faith. Don't give your tithe and offering one week and then hold up on God for the next three months. There you go. All right now. All right. Show them faithfulness. Show them consistency. Amen. Yes. Glory. They're not looking for somebody who's been up and down and all around and everything else. Are you hearing me this morning? Amen. Amen. We need cons consistency. They're looking for somebody today who will stick their faith out there on the line in the good times 
and in the bad times. And say, listen, Jesus Christ has been good to me in the good times, and He's been good to me in the bad times. Can anybody testify this morning? Bless His name. Oh, yes. God is still God, regardless of that. Young people learn more from the bad times of life than they do the good times. Because that's when you really find out what's true inside of your life. You've learned more. Nobody had to tell you when everything was going good. Amen? But when things got real bad, you learned from the experience. Because if you didn't learn from the experience, you might have to go through it again. Anybody ever had to go through it again? God has been trying to teach you something. And you were so hard-headed that you wouldn't let God do what He wanted to do and you had to go back to school. Yeah. Well, guess what? It's about time we graduate. Amen. It's about time some of us move on up. Yeah. We've been in second grade long enough. Yeah. It's time to go forward in God. Hallelujah. It's time to graduate. Right. Young people today want to see a faith coming from you that's an unshakable yeah. faith. Yeah. There you go. Just right. stay steady, you see. Even in the midst of it. That's right. ACLU, liberal progressivism, secular humanism, Christians being persecuted for standing on the Bible. That's right. All like that. Let your faith be unshaken. Right. Stand fast, even in the face of adversity. Yeah. Declare the love of Jesus Christ, whether they want to hear it or not. Thirdly, they want to know that your faith is not only unshakable, but they want to know that it's contagious. That's what we need. They want somebody who's not only saying it, but they're displaying it anywhere, anytime, to anybody. Yes. Right. You're not just saying it, but you're displaying it. In other words, when your kids go out to dinner and you're there and you're sitting there at the table at the restaurant with your friend, your boss, your family, your mother-in-law, or whoever it may be, do you still bow your head right there in the middle of that restaurant and ask God to bless that meal? Or are you looking yes. around seeing who and all is watching? Yes, I do. Yes. Amen. Amen. Bless His name. Amen. Your kids pick up on that stuff. Yes, yes. Lord. They, they notice that stuff. Yes, they do. Amen. People are wishy-washy with things like this today. We've got our young people asking, Hey, is God still God down at the golden corral? Or is He just God in the church? There you go, brother. Amen. Amen. I say there needs to be an extreme generation with extreme moms and dads who are unashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ no matter where you are. Yes. Amen. Amen. So let me say to you, my dear friend, that anybody can be a Christian inside of this place. Yeah. Right. Amen. Amen. I mean, it don't take much for you to walk in here and be a Christian inside of these four walls. But I want to know when tomorrow morning rolls around and you step out on that job site or you step out there on that campus or wherever you go, uh, amen, are you still going to be a Christian when you get out there? Or are you going to take a stand for Jesus? And are you not going to be ashamed? Bless you. Awesome. Yeah. Whatever moms and dads and grandmas and grandpas are not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ no matter what and no matter where they're at, it's going to make the next generation unashamed of the gospel and they'll step out onto that campus and they'll go to work and say, I don't care what anybody says. I'm going to pray over my meal. I'm going to testify of Jesus. I'm going to live for God. Come on, man. Amen. How extreme is that? That's what we need today. That's right. The psalmist here gives us some very practical steps this morning. He says in verse 2, he says, I will open my mouth in a parable, and I will utter dark sayings of old which, have, uh, which we have heard and known from our fathers. They told us these things. The first thing you need to understand is that we need to tell this next generation what we've seen, and what we've heard. Amen. Just like I've been preaching from the book of Acts, those apostles did that very same thing. You, you've got to be witnesses of what you've seen and what you've heard. I'm asking everybody in this place right now who's over 30 years old, has God ever done anything for you and you know beyond the shadow of a doubt that it was God who did that for you? Let me see your hands right now. Yes, amen, brother. Amen. Okay. Look around this place this morning. You don't need to hold back. Tell this next generation what you've seen and what you've heard. You've been through some hard times. 
Tell them, listen, we went through some hard times, but God has always been there. Yeah. God has always been faithful. Yeah. And the reason yeah, you're here right now is because the Lord loves you. And so do we. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Every day of your life, God loves you. No matter where you're at, God loves you. If, some, if nobody else loves you, God still loves you. You get, it, you get that inside of their spirit until they know that they have a Father in heaven who loves them. Sometimes. We kept right on trusting God through it all and believing in His Word. And in the tough times, God came through and God was faithful to us. Tell them what you've seen. Tell them what you've heard. I've heard the Word. I've seen God move. I've watched God pull us out. And I've seen God make a way where there seemed to be no way. Amen. Amen. All right. Can anybody testify this morning? Hallelujah. Let me tell you, Thank you Jesus. I'm standing right here this morning behind this pulpit, nothing short of God's provision and nothing short of God's mercy and nothing short of God's grace. That's the reason why I'm here right now trying to tell the next generation who's sitting here this morning, if God has done it for me, He can do it for you too. Yes, He can. Your children need to know, if God went my dad, John, well I can pick me up a rock and sling it at my Goliath and he'll do the same thing for me that he did for that. Come on somebody. Let me ask you. If God's dead, who's this living inside of my soul? God's not dead. He's alive. And on fire. Praise God. Let's give him some praise. Bless my brother. Bless you, Jesus. Hear what I'm telling you. There may be a moment when you're not around. You see? There may come a time, and there will come a time, if the Lord doesn't come before then, that we'll be taken off of this earth. And we need to make sure that when we're pulled off the scene, that this next generation knows that they can have a divine connection with God Almighty. Yeah. Amen. Amen. The Bible said that Peter and John, they were beat up for preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. Yeah. Amen. yeah. And they brought them before the magistrates. And they asked Peter and John, what is it you've been doing? What have you been saying? And they told them, well, we've been preaching the gospel. And they beat them up. And they said to Peter and John, when you leave out of here, don't you preach anymore in the name of Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> and right before they walked out that door, they said, excuse me, but we can only speak of the things that we've seen and heard. Amen. 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 That's the reason why our children need to have an experience with God that radically changes their lives. Because once you've had that experience and you couple that together in, with God's Word, nobody in this world will be able to tell you that God's not real. Nobody will be able to convince you that God doesn't exist. Because if He ever does one miracle or answers one prayer, nobody will be able to tell you that He's not real. That's right. Because you've seen it. And you've heard it. You know, we're talking about some basic tenets of the faith for a generation that's walking out onto college campuses and school campuses today yep. in a society that is completely adverse against the Lord. Amen. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. All right. They're against God. They're against this Bible right here. Now let me ask you a question to bring it up to full speed. In Egypt... Right now, there's thousands of people who have died in the church. Mm -hmm. And probably, I don't know the last count, probably close to 100 churches that have been burned to the ground just in the last several years by extremists. <laughs> if Jesus Christ is not who He claims to be, why burn the church to the ground? Let me say, if God is dead, then why are all the atheists and skeptics and unbelievers fighting so hard? I'll tell you why. It's because He's not dead. He's alive. He's alive. He's waiting on the seat of your children. The Bible says that we are to pass from one generation to the next, the gospel of Jesus Christ. That's right. Don't hide it from your children. 
Show your kids how to give glory to God. Show them how to praise the Lord. If you lift up your hand and praise the Lord, you know what? I believe your children will be more likely to lift up their hand. That's right. And praise the Lord. If you give God a hand clap of praise, your children will be more likely to give God a hand clap of praise. But if you do all your praising at the ball game, then you miss the mark and you're leading them in the wrong direction. That's right. Show them the Word of God will work for them. If you don't know it, how are you going to tell it to anybody else? If you don't know it, you can't show it. The Bible says that we ought to hide the Word in our heart that we might not sin against God. That's right. Speak the Word of God to them. Let them hear it in their ears. Teach them that, uh, to look in the Bible and to search the Scriptures out for themselves. Supply them with the Word of God and teach them to study and, and teach them that whenever they get in trouble, all they have to do is crack open the pages of the Word of God and they won't have to go down to the corner where the drug dealer is and say, hey, what do you have to give them? That's right. That's right now. Because they'll know that everything they, they can ever stand in need of in their life will be found right in the pages of this blessed old Bible. Amen. Amen. Yes. We need to tell them that God's Word is a lamp into my feet and a light into my path. Show them that God's Word will confront them and to transform them. Amen. Show them the work and the power of God through the Holy Spirit. I want to make sure you understand the theme of this church is and has been since its inception. And we make no apology for it. Amen. We make no apology for the movement of the Holy Ghost Amen. of God inside of this house. Amen. All right. All right. Never have and we never will. And I know this one thing. It's not going to be the programs it's not going to be games. It's not going to be functions that's going to do it. But if we'll let the Holy Ghost have His way, He can do something in two seconds that it will take us 20 years to do. There you go. All right now. Donna, come on with pen. I want to tell you today, you don't have to run all around this world to find God. You don't have to go from church to church to church. If you'll pray and you'll teach the next generation how to pray, God will send you what you need at the very time you need it. And this entire house and this community will know that the God that we serve is real. He's alive. And the warning tonight to this young generation is this. Don't be stubborn like those people who came before. Don't be stubborn like my generation. Hold fast. So here's what you need to do. First of all, eliminate every excuse and be not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Secondly, stay connected to Christ. Take a stand for Him. We're standing with Him. And we're going to pray for you. Trust me on that. It's going to be a spiritual warfare and it's going to be great. But you're not alone in this work. He's with you. He'll never leave you. He'll never forsake you. You might want to be prepared physically to walk alone a lot of times. But that's all right. Somebody might look at you and say, hey, don't you have a friend? And you can say, I've got a friend. He sticks closer than a brother. And he'll be right there with me when all others leave me and others forsake me. He'll be there. And I can hold his unchanging hand. And, and, and keep yourself to the day of marriage. Let me go ahead and say it. Don't be wearing things that's going to attract other people to come into your life and take advantage of you. Cover your body. Be holy. Live righteously before God. Be filled with passion. The passion of Jesus Christ. Moms and dads, don't keep your children from the house of God as a form of punishment. Don't keep them from karate and basketball and everything else. Keep them from those things. But don't keep them from the house of God. You let them come. Let them come. And watch God bless and bring them Would you bow in prayer with us today? Father in heaven, we love you. We thank you. Now God, as this message has gone out this morning, I pray God that you'll take it and use it for your glory. Save the lost. Touch those who may be struggling. Touch those who may be sick today. We will fail not to praise you and give you glory for it all. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We'll ask you to stand if you're able.
Thank you. 